salutations. In this part one of a two part episode, I'll go over concepts in stoichiometry. If this is your first time here, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And click on the bell icon to receive notifications for when I release new videos. Here's part one. In chemistry, there's stoichiometry, a vast topic with a simple concept. Proportions, ratios really. In today's episode, we're gonna be going over questions with ratios, whether or not it's ratios of moles or grams of a substance. Problems that look like this, problems that look like this, so please stay tuned. I have to explain to them about moles, grams, atomic weight, periodic table of elements. That's something that is a must on this outfit. This is for math. So let's get started. As we start on the topic of chemistry, it's pretty important to go over the most important tool in the subject matter. That's the periodic table of elements. This is the periodic table of elements. In the upper left, is the non-metal hydrogen. Directly below it are the alkali metals in orange. To the right of that is the alkaline earth metals in red. The purple has the transition metals. The dark green, the metal, slightly lighter green, the metalloid. In gray are the gases. The lighter blue, the halogen. The darker blue, the noble gases. For our intent and purposes, these are the main elements of the periodic table we'll need to know. This is not an in-depth look at the periodic table at this moment. I just want you guys to get a feel for what you'll be using throughout all my lessons in chemistry. You will need a periodic table of elements to find molar weight to find the number of neutrons, the number of protons, the number of electrons. In this particular episode, we're just going to focus on the atomic weight and the resource the periodic table gives us in finding it. For certain elements, substances, and count on this channel, I will mainly discuss problems because I realize that's what you guys want to get into. Sometimes theory will have to be placed in the discussion, but I will try to keep that to a minimum. Instead, just leaving reference links to sites that will explain some of the back end topics to give you a more fuller understanding. So if at any time you're confused by the terms that I'm using, please check the description below for reference links to the topics that I'm discussing. One such topic I will be discussing is the concept of moles. Before you proceed with the rest of this video, you will really want to understand what a mole is. Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of a substance or an element. Again, more information on the mole is included in reference links below. I just want to get right into the questions and label a procedure that will make solving these questions easier. The procedure will require three steps. Step one, read the question and understand what they are asking you for. A lot of the times the questions in chemistry can be confusing and it's very important for you to identify whether or not you're asked to find grams or moles or other. You have to know what you're looking for first. Step two, look at the chemical equation if given. Chemical equation will give you the proportion of moles in the products to the proportion of moles in the reactants that create them. So look at the chemical equation. Make sure it's balanced out. Again, balancing of chemical equations will be included in a reference link below. Maybe in a future video, I may touch on this topic. Now it's all about stoichiometry. So on to step three. In step two, I briefly discuss step three. You have to know the, ratio, the ratios of one substance, i.e. the reactants, 
to the ratio of the products. That's important. Once you can identify and answer these three questions, then finding the actual proportion is simple mathematics, simple ratios. The ratios that you set up in stoichiometry are very important. You need to be able to set up proportions so as though all other elements or all, all other variables in the proportion are canceled out except for what you're looking for. Observe below. In these equations, the 2KCl3 product being broken down to the reactants of 2KCl plus 3O2, we want to be able to convert from moles to moles. Moles of one element to moles of another element. That's simple. We can solve this problem because we see the ratio that it's in. 1.65 moles of KCl3 times the ratio of O3, in this case you have three moles of that, to two moles of KClO3. So the relationship of O2 was three to two. So we're gonna need that ratio. Three moles O2 to two moles KClO3. Notice how the KClO3 is lined up. I can simply cross them out, leaving the only variable that's needed which is the O3. The moment I'm able to cross it out, I can just multiply my numbers, my numerator and my denominator. There's an invisible one underneath the 1.65. Simple mathematics leads me to 2.48 mole of O2. That was a simple stoichiometric problem, converting from moles to moles. Generally, it ain't that easy. So, let's look at the second problem. We have a reaction. Again, first thing we need to do is read what the reaction is. The reaction states this. 4Fe plus 3O2 leads to a product of 2Fe2O3. The question reads, how many grams of Fe2O3 are produced when 42.7 grams of Fe is reacted? So now, step one, what are they looking for? In this case, grams. So check. Step two, looking at the coefficients of the reactants and the products, we can determine the ratio. Again, the coefficients are the numbers that are before the reactants and the products. The ratio is four to three to two. Four Fe plus three O2 to two Fe2 O3. Four to three to two. That's our ratio, which leads us to step three, which was answered in step two. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. Now that we know the three things that we need for our procedure, grams, what the coefficients are, four to three to two, we can go about setting up our ratio. In your ratios, you wanna be able to have the variable or the unit or whatever you're looking for to be the last thing standing. In this case, it's gonna be grams. Grams of Fe2O3. So this ratio is a little bit more drawn out than the last one was. Starts off like this. We have 42.7 grams of Fe. We ultimately wanna be able to get rid of grams of Fe because we need grams of Fe2O3. So that means in our next ratio, we need grams Fe to be in our denominator. From grade school, we realized that a numerator can cancel out a denominator. So we need grams Fe in our denominator. That means we need to know moles Fe in our numerator. One mole Fe is equal to 55.85 grams Fe. Yeah, that's a reference back to the periodic table of elements that we discussed in the beginning. If you look at Fe or iron, you see it's atomic weight. Then we want to be able to get back to the substance we're looking for, which is Fe2O3. We're gonna set a ratio up for Fe2O3 to Fe. That calls back the equation in which this came from. The equation said we had four Fe, and the Fe2O3 it created was two. So the ratio will be two Fe2O3 over four Fe. That ratio goes right adjacent to the one over 55.85 that you see. From there, you're almost home. When we stated before how to go about setting up a stoichiometric ratio, we said that we needed to have the last variable to be standing. In this case, the last variable that we need is going to be Fe2O3 because that's what we need. That's what the question asks for. So in our numerator, in the final ratio, we have to have Fe2O3. In our denominator and the final ratio, we're also gonna have Fe2O3. The Fe2O3 we needed in grams, so we need to be able to put the weight of Fe2O3 in the numerator. That ended up being 159.7 Fe2O3. Add it up, 159.7 Fe2O3 over one mole of Fe2O3. Now, if you look at our ratios, you can see that we have 
multiple variables that can cross out, which will ultimately lead to the isolation of the FE203. Simple math, crossing out, dividing our denominators, we're left with an answer of 61.0 grams of FE203. It's the second problem, so that's done. Again, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you have further questions. Then I'll be sure to address them at a future date.